Well, hello everyone, Brad Kelly here at 45 Drives. Um, today we are not shooting a tech tip. Um, we are, well, actually, let me, let me take you through the history lesson. Um, if anyone's been a fan of us for a while now, I'd say more than five years, when we first got started making videos, we weren't doing tech tips actually, we were doing kind of long form videos. We took our inspiration from Linus and similar things and we, we figured that'd be the best way to show off us, our, our personalities, our products, and, uh, and the things that we can do for people. Um, so one of the first kind of videos that, that actually kind of hit was we built a Gluster Cluster uh, with ZFS underneath and I did a whole video on destroying the cluster where I came out and made funny noises and, well, <laughs> in my own words, went to town on it. I've got a Windows client here and I've got my cluster as I introduced. I'm going to start a file transfer like last time and I'm just, well, I'm gonna go to town on this thing. And just took it apart, failed it. Because the point was to show that as I destroyed things in the cluster, transfers kept going to show the resilience. And then we kind of brought it back up. And well, really, you guys really seem to like that. So you might be wondering like what the point of this is. You're saying, oh great, you guys made old videos people liked. So what we're gonna do today actually is we're gonna go back to those long form videos. And we're gonna start off first by doing something different. And I'm gonna get out from behind the desk. So why don't you join me? So what better way to start than recreating our fan favorite failing a cluster video. But this time we're gonna do it with Seth. And also while we do that, we're gonna kind of show off our new digs. We'll go for a walk down our hallway here, I'll show you some stuff. Once we get to the lab, then I'll kind of detail what we're gonna do, all that fun stuff, the technical things. But uh, before we continue, uh, let me get changed. All right, well, I got my new shirt on. You may be wondering why I stopped to do that. It's hard to get swag around here some days, so you gotta take every opportunity I get. Um, yeah, so this is it. This is the walk down the hallways nice high ceilings and it's a great place to work like for example we have our own family doc for the company and he happens to live in our office here so isn't that nice um, so we've got everything we've got amenities right speaking of amenities I want to take a look over at our uh, at our um, cafe I guess it's called oh and great they have the hot sauces lined up so hopefully they're not gonna make me do that later because that is not in my contract no, I joke, but uh, oh, we're steps away. We're gonna we're gonna get in the lab, um, and uh, here we are, our new home for the 45 drives R&D department, our lab. We've got our nice high ceilings, our light. We've got an oscilloscope over there somewhere. We've got all the equipment. So without further ado, let's fail a cluster. Okay, so before we actually get into the meat of it, I know I keep teasing that, I figured let's do a quick lap around the office. The office? The lab. We're in the lab. So uh, like I said, this is our new home. You can hear the echo maybe, but uh, on nice bright sunny days, we don't even have to ever turn the lights on because of our kind of daylight glass here. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, we've been living here for a few months now. We got set up. We've got our kind of modular storinator whenever we've got to test different stuff. Mark will kind of try some things out here. Um, our new little drive removal for SSDs, something we're working on. Um, injection mold machine, which is pretty much a bit of a toy, but it was an experiment we tried on some things. Uh, little printer, big printer. We uh, 3D print a lot of stuff here, great way to prototype. Um, nice workbench. The oscilloscope I keep talking about. We got our own oscilloscope. I don't know about you guys, but we do. Um, a little bit of garbage in the corner, don't worry about that. A couple door frames, who doesn't have a spare door frame or two. Um, the server room's there, we'll go soon. We've got some parts on the rack. Um, this is our electrical, our electrical station. Um, hot plate, soldering station. We, when we're putting together some prototypes of stuff, Josh will often set up out here. We've got RAM set up. He didn't put these together, but he probably could have if we let him. And, um, this is, uh, this is where we're gonna start our transfer from. Just a nice little lab desktop. And uh, don't mind our store in area, it's been literally shot up. There's a fun little sneak peek 
keep your eyes open for something there. But uh, all right, now lab tour is over, building tour is over. Let's uh, let's get to the main event. Let's bring this cluster down. So before we get into it, over in the server room there, I have three Q30 storinators in a uh, in a Ceph cluster. They are our production Ceph cluster, and why I say production like that is it's not customer facing, but our internal teams all use this. Um, it's attached to a three node Proxmox cluster, so a lot of virtualization RBD, and then we have file sharing as well. So what we're going to watch is a transfer over the file sharing. That's kind of kind of be our metric of seeing if, if it's up or not, and uh, everyone should be all fine because we're gonna, just going to take pieces of this cluster down, and Proxmox should be able to continue to read everything. Um, hint, hint, don't tell anyone. Um, I'm actually going to pull the whole thing down and disrupt some people because why the hell not? Let's have some fun. So. Uh, uh, with that said, let's start that transfer. All right, so uh, before I start pulling my files off the Samba share through CephFS, quick rundown of what we're looking at. Here's kind of the overview screen of what the cluster is doing right now. I've already got a couple OSDs failed. I noticed some SSDs failed the other day and I just kind of left them there. So I guess we started this video a couple days early, hey? Ha ha. Um, and now here's the Proxmox node. Uh, this is what I was talking about, our Proxmox cluster. In particular, see the DNS, um, uh, the DNS VM that's up. That, uh, that's probably the first piece of in infrastructure internally that people are going to notice, because it's how we connect everything, that uh, they're going to be like, hey, what the heck's going on here? So when I completely kill the cluster, this Proxmox DNS is going to shit the bed. Um, excuse my language. So see, it's running right now, and we'll check this out when we come back in. So. A little further ado, let's get this cluster transfer started. So I've got a bunch of old tech tips and uh, let's drag this over to our desktop. So that transfer started, let's go kill a server. So this is our, um, our server room. It's nice and big, it's got all kinds of room. We've got a lot of different processes running, but uh, here's kind of the core infrastructure that I was talking about. So our Ceph cluster one, two, and three. Um, so I can pull network cords, I can pull drives. Let's go right to the source. Boop. She gone. Um, let's go back, make sure everything's still running. And it paused, so let's see why it paused. F dash S, because OSD one's down. Did I pull? Let's take a look at F dash S. Health warning. OSD two is active. Everyone should be fine. What is your problem? Everything's there. Oh, Windows is just being a pain right now, it seems. Oh, there it goes. Starting to come back up. So it must have been the whole CTDB failover. Yeah, so see, that's node three that I killed down. Um, and uh, let's wait for Windows to pick back up. Can I actually access the files still underneath? Yeah. Can I watch one of them? Yeah. You know what? I'm chalking this up to Windows Explorer not doing its job. Obviously, all these files are still here. Some would consider that a failure. I don't. I can still access my files. <laughs> File Explorer seems to be upset about the transfer, but whatever. Start it again. We can look into that. But the point is, I killed one server. The cluster is obviously mad about it. It's telling me I'm missing one, a third of my... my uh, um, data, storage, you know what I mean. But if I connect to the share, everyone's still happy. I can watch things off of it. That one's there. Oh, look, I get to look at my face. Awesome. Pause that. No, I'm definitely going to chalk that up to uh, Windows Explorer being a bum. So you know what? Let's, let's take advantage of this. I was going to go node by node. Went a little off script here. Let's just pull the whole thing down. Because when we pull the whole thing down, it'll really justify this failed Windows transfer and uh, we won't be able to hit our Proxmox anymore and um, people will probably be upset but then we can bring it right back up. So let's go back to the server room.
one wasn't enough, two's not enough, let's do all three. Boom. That's the sound computers make when they turn off. Okay, now it's really gonna be mad. Let's see if we can access anything anymore. Nope, boom. Paused, broken. Um, let's open File Explorer back up, Lab Share, refresh. Ooh, she's hanging. Oh, obviously, and then, yeah, OSD one's down completely. So let's go hop over to Proxmox. Um, so I go here, it's running. Console. It's very interesting. What's the storage on? It'd be easy. It hasn't even noticed it's down yet. It must be in RAM cache. Oh yeah, there, see? Now we've got all our failures. All right, so our three node lab production cluster is down. Samba can't find the share anymore. Our, our transfer died. Proxmox is mad at me because it can't find its, its RBD blocks. At this point, I was really hoping <laughs> that someone was gonna come flying through the door and we were gonna have a little bit of a brawl and it was gonna be great for uh, the content, you know? But uh, no one seemed to notice yet. So that just tells me we got a good Friday afternoon here, everyone's having a good time. Either went home early or, uh, well, I don't know what they're doing. But change of plans, let's just get the thing back up before anyone notices. And uh, the nice part is we'll just leave everything here. I'll go plug the servers back in and we can just kind of watch how Ceph will gracefully start itself up again. No corruption, no growth, stuff like that. We'll just kind of show you the process of what it looks like as nodes, services, OSDs all come back on. So follow me again, we'll go into the lab. Can't forget my coffee. I am gonna need two hands though, so maybe I'll have to put it down. Also, don't bring your coffee in the server room. I'm sure that's a no-no, but uh, power. Okay, one's up. Two's up. Sorry if I'm screaming into the mic. I'm in the loud server room, but you guys will have to do. All right, so our, all three are powered again. And, uh, well, let's go ping some servers till it comes back. Keep that shut. It's nice and hot in there, and if I don't keep that door shut, the uh, our uh, kind of runs away. Okay, so immediately it's not all going to come back at first. So let's first, um, well, let's just first pop open a command terminal and uh, ping one of these servers until she comes back. Once it comes back, well, then we can actually start our recoveries. Actually. The fun part, I, I lied a little bit there. We don't have to do anything with the recovery. We just kind of run commands and watch till we see it's back. All right, so we've got a ping. So one of the servers are back up. Let's try to remote in, see the state of things. Uh, I'm gonna restart this session. Okay, good, we got a login prompt. I'm just gonna wait a sec as that connects. Let me see if I can get into one of the other nodes as well. back in on three, We're back in on one. So let's see, let's see a good old Cephas. Let's see what it thinks. Let's see how happy or sad it is or mad. Health warning, one file system is degraded. Okay, great. So we're in our reconnect phase, which means it's reconnecting all the old clients. Great, should be there relatively soon. Once that's back up, we can start our Samba transfer again. And when that's there, we'll go take a look at uh, uh, Proxmox and make sure it can see everything again. But all our OSD started again, so that's great. Oh, the system's degraded. Normal, normal, normal. If I run DF, this is probably going to hang. Oh, no, it didn't because, yeah, we're going to have to mount that again. That's no big deal. F -S. Take a look at tail F fire log, Ceph, Ceph MDS. Oh, who's active? OSD 2, let's go over there. LSD2, SOD2, that's not right. There we go. F-S. Ah, perfect. A little patience, that's all I needed. I don't have much of it. Um, 
So we're back active there. The cluster is health warned again because it's mad at me because again, remember those OSDs I said that failed? They're still there. And there's a couple placement groups that weren't scrubbed in time, but that's got nothing to do with this. That's uh, me just letting this cluster get a little um, unpruned, if you will. Um, so what we have to do very quickly is mount all our Ceph file shares again. Typically, you would have these mounted on gateways, so they would just be able to reconnect themselves, where I was cheating a little bit and mounted themselves on the OSDs, which is not best practice. Um, I just had to do that again manually. Um, but again, we're in the lab, we're in R&D. Who cares about best practices? I uh, joke, I joke. Um, CTBIP, so we've got an active connection there. Our, um, no, that's what we have to do. Hold on, start. MNT, FSGW. Uh, lab share dot mount. Okay, we're going to do that. So all I'm doing is reconnecting my underlying file system share. So we'll do that. Sys2, connect that. DF, there it is there. Um, who is our active CTDB guy? That's this one. So I'm just going to look at this Samba logs very quickly. Yeah, it seems okay. So uh, let's pop open this and refresh this. Look, there's all our stuff again. Let's watch um, the company blooper video. <laughs> I wish you guys could see that. All right, there's Josh. A great video he made. Cool. So we're back on the Ceph cluster again. File share is working. That's great. Let's see if we can start our transfer back up again. So I'm going to hit try again. And remember, Windows screwed us. Ah, oh, but not this time, baby. We're back. See? That simple. A couple commands. So we'll minimize all that, give Proxmox a nice refresh. Summary, okay, it can see the usage again, that's a great sign. And uh, no one seems to be too mad here. So, cluster's back, that's it. I think we're done. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. We, uh, we went for a little tour around, uh, around the office. I think you saw some faces around. Um, we got out behind the desk, we failed the cluster again quickly, brought it back up quickly. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I forgot how hard these long videos are. I don't know people like Linus and stuff do it. I guess that's why they're the professionals in that. Um, but I guess what I do wanna kinda of say is these aren't going away. This was kind of our intro to bring these kind of longer form videos back. Like as you can see, we got a lot of things going on here. You may be also wondering why the hell we have a Stornator that has been shot. Well, stay tuned, something's coming there. And really, like all the cool stuff we build here, we don't just do clusters. We do everything. No, um, so stay tuned. Keep watching 45 Drives. Long form videos are back, baby. Can't wait for you guys to see them.